Let's all get a Bible. I want everybody to get a Bible get, so you can see one. If somebody beside you did not bring theirs, uh, share your copy with them. I sort of give them a little punk like that. Church, man, bring your Bible. Uh, uh, we're going to turn to the very first chapter of the Bible, Genesis chapter number 1. This is when God was making everything. Now, there's only two explanations of this world and the universe being here. It either got here by itself or somebody made it. And every scientist in the world, every historian, every teacher, every athlete, every entertainer falls into one of them two categories. It either got here by itself or something, somebody made it. It takes a whole lot more faith to believe it got here by itself than somebody made it. This, didn't get, this book didn't get here by itself. That didn't get here by itself, and no scientist would believe it. Your watch didn't get here by itself, and no scientist would believe it. But they believe the whole universe, set on a perfect time, got here by itself. You know why people are atheists? Because they want to live like the devil. That's why. And don't want to have to answer to God. Amen? And so uh, we know there's a God. There's no doubt about it. There has to be. It's impossible that there couldn't be a God. And here he is in chapter 1, creating. He done this and that first day, this and that second day, this and that third day, this and that the fourth day. Now, on the fifth day, I want you to look at verse 20, Genesis 1, 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly, and the moving creature that hath life. So all them fish and everything just, bam, started swimming around in the oceans. All kinds of creatures. Weird-looking ones, cute-looking ones, mean-looking ones. And then he said, And fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. So he made fish and birds. They're, they're sort of kin to each other. Fish fly in water and birds fly in air. A fish up in the air and a bird in the water is out of place. God has a place for everything and a purpose for everything. Verse 21, And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, and waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. I want to look at that winged fowl and the birds that fly around. This morning, you're going to have never done this before in my life, I'm going to bring you a message on the subject Bible birds. Bible birds, birds in the Bible. Now, there's over 60, I think, birds, different birds mentioned in the Bible. Um, you uh, you got to remember that birds are different. Birds are special made. God made birds special. Even their bones are different. That's really super lightweight so they can fly. God made people. God made varieties of people. Amen? One man said... Uh, he said, God sure must love common people because he sure made a lot of them. And I'd say, that's right. I agree with that. Amen. Uh, I preached about marriage last night, and, or last Sunday night, and how the husbands and wives should get along that son. Uh, that one lady said, uh, she said, my husband, uh, I'm, I'm sort of, my husband's always just so melancholy. My husband's melancholy. And they said, Why, what do you mean by that? She said, well, his head looks like a melon and his face looks like a collie. That's not the right meaning of that word. But God made different, God made different, different, uh, that's bad, ain't it? But God made different people. Look, and and uh, you think it's hard to look at me for 30 minutes. You ought to look what I got to look at. Uh, that's hard on the eyes, man. Uh, but uh, anyway, listen, God made birds and he made different, all kinds of birds. All kinds of birds that fly in the air. Now, a bird, you've heard me preach this. Everything you can see is a picture of something you can't see. Everything that we see in the natural world is a picture of things you can, that's there in the spiritual world, but you can't see them. So birds in the Bible usually represent a lesson he's trying to teach us or a spirit, a good one or a bad one. We'll look at that this morning. You'll learn something if you'll stay with me. Birds are not near as dumb as people think they are. You hear people say, oh, bird brain over there. Really? Are they that dumb? Well, there's one of them flew 7,200 miles from France to Vietnam, 
And when the weather changes, turn right around and go back to the same spot. And you know people can't do that? There's not a pilot in the world can fly from one city exact to the other with no navigation and no instruments and no way to tell which way he's going, and no radar, no screen. People can't do it. Birds can. A Baltimore Oriole, a bird, was tagged before, a certain bird was tagged and flew to South America and came back to, to his home a thousand miles away and went to the very same tree and rested in it. Now, where do they get that? How do birds know how to do that? That didn't evolve. Millions of them do it every year. Go fly a thousand miles and right back to the same spot. We call that imparted knowledge. God put that inside of them. Intuition, whatever uh, that you want to call it. And God did that for bird. Now, we're going to look at seven major Bible birds. You pay very close attention because it's going to affect your life. These things do. Number one, the raven. The raven is a scavenger bird. In Genesis chapter 8 and verse 7, it talks about the raven. Ravens are very selfish. Ravens are pictures of demonic spirits, evil spirits. I'm telling you, uh, people, uh, how, many, how many remember the old movie, and they still do them now, uh, the old Alfred Hitchcock movie called The Birds. And I remember that was when I was growing up, and I remember that was a, I scared me to death. And I watched that, and these birds, birds come flying in the house, and birds come in, birds come in flying. It's always, it's always real scary when those birds start coming in. Let me tell you about ravens this morning. They fly restlessly looking for food. You know what they feed on? Carry on. You know what that is? Putrefying guts, roadkill, as me and you would call it. Ravens pray and follow something that's dead. And when they get sold to something that's not like a lamb or, or an, an, an animal that a raven can get, according to Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 17, they pick out their eyes. So a raven will get an animal and go straight for their eyes. Bam! Pluck, peck them out with their beak so that they can't see and disable them. Now, if a raven is a picture of an evil spirit, you guarantee you evil spirits have those same patterns. Everything you can see is a picture of something you can't see. And the Bible tells us all the way through that the fowls of the air are pictures of evil spirits. There are evil spirits flying around. That you can't, I, I believe that's why God made birds to fly. Because if we got up here and preached, there's spirits flying around. There's good ones and bad ones. There's angels and there's demons. There's the Holy Spirit and unclean spirit. People say, oh, you're crazy. Nothing can't fly. But God put birds in the air to prove to you that spirits can fly. Everything you can see is a picture of something that you can't see. Uh, people wouldn't believe us if it wasn't that way. In 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 4, God had a good purpose and used those ravens to feed Elijah. So that means God can even use uh, wickedness and the devil sometimes to fulfill his plans in our life. They feed on dead animals. They have a weird sort of a countenance. They, they can smell death. They can, they can uh, come in. Uh, you always see in those scary movies, a bird flies in. The wind, uh, old folks used to say, if a bird comes in the house, it means what? Somebody's going to die. You ever heard that old saying? Now, the Bible don't say that, but there's a reason, old people, some of them old fables and stuff, there's reasons behind people believing those old-fashioned myths like that. But an unclean animal, Leviticus 11.15 tells us that a raven's unclean and then the Lord turns around and said his man was possessed with unclean spirits. Now this is where we lose science. This is where we lose all the medical uh, uh, population, the doctors uh, that don't recognize spe uh, courtroom judges. They say, why did this young man do this? Why did this young man have supernatural strength? Why does this young man? And they, they try to say he was born with a drug addiction or he was born and raised in poverty and that cause. You know why they believe that? They believe that because they discount what the Bible says about unclean spirits. Now, I'm telling you this morning, more than any other time in history, unclean spirits, 
spirits are out in this world. I've got them on video that when they get on those drugs, especially that flocka, they have superhuman strength. And according to the Bible, a raven is a picture of that. Let me move on quickly. I'm going to talk about the hen. She's a sheltering bird. So the, the raven is a scavenger bird. A hen, chicken, is a sheltering bird. In Luke 13 and verse 34, Jesus looked out over the city of Jerusalem. And he looked out and he said, God, my, my, how awful it is, the shape y'all are in. He said, how often would I have gathered you together as a hen, put her wings over her brood, and you would not. You remember that scripture? The Lord used a hen to show that's a sheltering bird. You know that old mama hen? She is, I mean, people, I don't know where people said, uh, oh, you're just a chicken. We say somebody's a chicken, it means they're scared. But I don't know, I don't know if we have wrongfully gave chickens that name. I know they're weird. And I know you just walk out and go, I know, I've done them. I, 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 every time I see one, I want to scare it. But you know what? You, you get down there and try to take them little dibbies away from that mama hen. And you'll see her turn into the opposite of chicken. I mean, she'll st- he'll claw your eyes out. Have you ever tried to get... Di- you ever, you ever, uh, if, ch- if, a, if a mama hen's got something like that, this is for you ladies, you listening? She puts them wings over that little, them little chickens, buddy. And I'm telling you, uh, you've got her to fight. And she'll fight you till you kill her to protect her young. You hear me, ladies? I said, that's a lesson for every woman in here this morning. How that a mother hen will fight for her kids. You never see a mother hen uh, say, well, listen, kids, y'all y'all watch TV. I'll be back tonight or maybe tomorrow. Be sure and uh, uh, go to bed uh, before 5 o'clock in the morning, and I'm going to go with the other hens, and we're going to party. Uh, kids, the hens don't do that. You know why? Because they're much better than people. Uh, one more time. Thank you. Lord have mercy if y'all been watching TV all week. I can tell you, you're dull as, a, as that thing right there trying to cut a steak. I'm going to tell you something this morning, folks. That mama hen will fight for her. She has four calls. Chickens talk, you know that. Uh, they they, they uh, cackle one way that means it's getting dark. They cackle another way that means they found food. They cackle another way when they're in danger. And they cackle uh, when they have a yearning desire over their children. That's the sheltering bird. Quickly, number three. The stork. The stork is a sweet bird. In Jeremiah chapter number 8 and verse number 7, the Bible said the stork knoweth her appointed time. Now how, this is another one for ladies, uh, how did the stork get the reputation of bringing the babies? Uh, you know, you've heard all your life, uh, where'd I come from, Mama? Well, a stork left you out there uh, uh, behind that tree, and Mommy went out there and got you. Now, well, that's, that's, that's a lie. That is not true. I mean, surely you can tell them a, a little something. Don't tell them everything, but tell them something besides that. Uh, a stork did not, uh, little kids now think, they think it was flying through the sky, and a stork had one of them little sacks, and then just dropped them out at your house. There you go. Uh, what if they had dropped me somewhere else? I might have wound up with uh, parents that I don't even look like. And, and, you know, but anyway, they get that. Uh, now, now, the reason they get that is because a stork is known for gentleness. It's a sweet bird. It's, a, no, it's not like a raven. It don't attack things and kill it. It's like, it's like affection or kind. Let me say, again, storks take pains to help their babies. Storks will not leave their babies. Every woman in here, hear me today. Storks will not leave their babies. They just won't do it. They just won't. There's been on record cases of where a mother stork had a bunch of little baby storks, whatever they storkettes, or something call them, and and they and they're in their nest, and the nest has caught on fire, and the and it's going to burn them, and the mom will stay right there and burn to death before she'll leave them babies. There was a time in this country when women felt that way about their kids. 
Now, buddy, it's walk off and leave them. Uh, I mean, it's unbelievable the lack of natural affection. The stork's teaching you a lesson, ladies, and men too. We'll get you in a minute. But the stork is teaching you a lesson. It's teaching you a lesson. Uh, we've had uh, sickness of two of them kids over there uh, in the last few weeks now. And I know uh, old Big T over there, he was in the hospital for a while, and uh, his mom stayed right there with him. Uh, when Aniston was in the hospital, she was in there like 10 days or something. And I went down there and carried, she, she rode in the ambulance from Morgan to Charlotte and rode down there and didn't even see the light of day for 10 days. And I told her, I said, I don't see how you stand this. I said, do you want me to get somebody to come and stay with you, stay with her for a day so you can get out and go, go to the store or something? She said, no, I won't leave her. No, I won't leave her. And I thought, you know, that's exactly, and I appreciate them, both of them being like that. Listen, you don't leave your babies. You don't leave your babies. You don't leave your baby. Well, I'm saying, oh, oh, tonight I've got to have this baby. And just as soon as I can, I'm getting, putting it out in daycare so I can get back to my life. I'm going to tell you something. If God gives you a baby, that baby is your life. I know sometimes in this day and time, women have to work, and I'm not fussing at you, but there's something wrong with a woman that puts her kids off on everybody they can every chance they get. Something wrong. Something wrong. Amen? That stork will not. And you know what storks do? They even carry their young. I mean, they're old. Like old stork. Old mama stork and daddy stork. They put them on their wing and can carry them around. They don't desert their parents when, when they get old. Number four, the dove. Now everybody knows what the dove is. He's a scent bird. You don't believe that the birds represent spirits? Somebody tell me what spirit the dove represents. The Holy Spirit. See, that one's obvious. Now, if, if, a, if a dove represents the Holy Spirit, which it does, a raven could represent an evil spirit. I know there's bird lovers going to be watching this on, you, on the Internet. And I get email, we get letters from, good Lord, uh, I mean, everywhere in the world, Australia, Africa. Uh, somebody, one of the other days, somebody was saying, I don't have that here in Ireland. Help, help me preach her there. I mean, all over the world. And I know there's bird lovers, maybe here this morning, say, oh, but all birds are precious and they all, how could you possibly compare them? Listen, if, if the Holy Spirit can represent a, uh, uh, by represent by an animal, an unclean spirit is represented by an animal. And you got you can't have it both ways. If one works, the other works. Noah sent the dove. The dove is a scent bird. Noah sent it out, and it flew around, flew around, flew around, and there wasn't no world out, and it came back. And he waited a week or two. The raven, he just went on out there and stayed. But the dove, he went and went and went and went and went. Finally, he's come back, had an olive branch in his hand. We studied that the other night and on Wednesday night, what the olive tree represents. And he came back, and Noah got out of there. You know what a dove represents? A dove represents cleanness. A dove is a gentleman. Doves are gentlemen. Doves don't just come in and barge in on them. You can, they can be offended real easy. That's a picture of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is a gentleman. He'll deal with you. He'll convict you of your sin. And if you won't get right, he'll, he can be offended. He can be grieved. He can be, and be careful of grieving the Spirit of God out of your life. Be careful when God's convicting you about something. Maybe your church attendance, or maybe your tithing, or maybe your uh, Bible reading, or maybe your prayer, or maybe some sin in your life. Be careful about ignoring that voice because you can grieve the Spirit of God. A dove is like that. You can just say, get away from here, and get rid of it. He's not going to force himself on you. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He don't force himself on anybody. I'm telling you this morning, the Lord was baptized one day, and the Bible said this, John the Baptist took him down there, the Baptist, and took him down in that water, and it went like this, and Jesus went down in the water, and when he come up, the Bible said they looked around, and there come the Spirit of God descending like a dove. The Holy Spirit coming out in a bodily shape like a dove and landed on Jesus, and God the Father spoke and said, this is my beloved Son, and whom I'm well pleased. There's your Trinity. God the Father's in heaven, 
God the Son here being baptized and God the Spirit resting on him. Some nut writes letters to tell us and says that Jesus couldn't have been God because God can't die. Uh, Jesus had a fleshly body that died. But he's still God. He got up over death. He died for us, you nut. And I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, you hear me today, that Spirit of God is pictured by the dove. It teaches us, the dove does, that... Uh, when the Father shall send him, if you're led by the Spirit, if you're led by the Spirit, you're like a dove. You're nice. You're a gentleman. You're not hateful. You don't bite everybody's head off as soon as they walk in the room. You're not irritable all the time. You're not an old bad word. <laughs> Cut you dinner. You better pay attention to something. You'll miss something here. I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, a dove is polite. A dove's not a smart aleck. A dove don't cuss you out. A dove is a picture of the Holy Spirit, the sent bird. Number five. Number five, the sparrow, the small bird. A sparrow is a small bird. The word sparrow means to chirp. Did you know they say that birds are the only creatures in the world that sing besides men? I don't know about that. I'm not sure if that's right or not, but that's what they say. Um, they, they are so insignificant. In Matthew 10, 29, the Lord made a point, and he said, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? You can buy two sparrows for a farthing. A farthing back then was less than a half a cent. You could buy two of them for a half of a penny. That's getting, that's getting cheap. I'm telling you, buddy, you don't, what can you buy now for a penny? I mean, about nothing. I, I, I might as well take pennies out of circulation. They ought to take dollar bills out of circulation. The only place they're any good is church. Uh, uh, that's the only time you ever see them. You can't buy you nothing out there. They go around all the time. Church all circulate pretty good. But uh, uh, you know what? Them, 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 them little sparrows, Lord, them things ain't that big. They don't weigh nothing. They're just a few ounces. They can sit on you right there. You wouldn't even know it. And that little sparrow sat there, and the Lord looked down one day, and he said, you can buy two of them for a penny. You can buy four of them for two pennies. You could buy six of them for three pennies. You could buy what, ten of them for a nickel. And he said, your father watches every one of them birds hit the ground. Millions of them in the world. They're kin to them little fitch or finks or finch or whatever them little things are. Them little bitty ones. Uh, they're not as little as hummingbirds. Uh, hummingbirds about the little about like that. But I'm telling you, buddy, them little things sit up there. And you think about this now. You say, well, I just don't know if God's, where's God? Where's God? Listen, God sees every sparrow that hits the ground. There one got hit in a truck, hit by in front of a truck in Georgia. Uh, the Lord says. Uh, there's one in South Carolina, died of old age. Well, bless his heart. And, and the Lord, now, you think if God seen one in, in Oregon just now and 45 in Nevada that got killed by tractor and trailers this morning and 16 in New York and 85 in North Carolina, don't you know he's concerned about you and your problems? Don't you know he knows your marriage trouble? Don't you know he knows your kids? Don't you know he knows how much your light bill is and how much your car payment is? Thank God, brother, that, that ought to help us this morning. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Jesus said, are you not more valued than many sparrows? How much more valuable is a human being? Jesus didn't even die for sparrows. He died for people. You're important to God this morning. You're important to God. He cares about you. He knows what you're going through. He knows the battles you face. The sparrow, the Lord tells us, don't ever doubt it. Don't ever doubt it. Don't ever doubt his power. You say, well, if he cares, why don't he do something? Well, it's just like God, you don't get, God don't get no hurry. And God lets things come to our life to teach us. And if God's letting a lot of bad stuff come in your life, if it's to teach you something, for heaven's sake, learn your lesson and do right. But if it's just the devil fighting you and battles and stuff, stay faithful to God because his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Number six. Here's where it might get a little spooky for some of you. The dove's a scent bird. 
The sparrow's a small bird. The stork's a sweet bird. The raven is a scavenger bird. The hen is a nice bird. What I say, sheltering bird. Try to remember all that backwards while you're up here. Number six, the owl is a satanic bird. The owl is a satanic bird. In Isaiah 34 and verse 13, you check it out, study it when you get home. It talks about during, that's about the end of the world when God burns everything up, when it's all over. He takes these birds and he shows, that's how spirits are going to be in, in hell and burn. And you know who's always on that list? Owl, come around. Them screech owl. Owl, I know that we have an obsession with owls in our country today. And I believe that's why. Everywhere you look, it's owl jewelry, owl necklaces, owl bracelets, owl ring. And somebody told me just the other day, said, I, they're just so cute. I don't, I don't never have thought that. Uh, I don't you. They have big eyes and a big head, the same picture face as aliens. And I ain't done, I'm just getting started. You need to rush up on your education. And I'm fixing to educate you. Are you listening? They are, they, are, they are nocturnal. That means you can see at night. They fly around at night. They have 100 times the vision of a man. They, can, they, they work at night. They're unclean. Now, we have this is the wise old owl. Represents wisdom. And that's true. But the Bible said that serpent was wise and subtle. So if the Holy Spirit, listen to me, if the Holy Spirit represents by a dove, you can mark it down, brother. The devil and his demons represented by an owl. You can mark it down. I ain't through. I'm just getting started. They abide in ruin. I've seen people with owls tattooed on their, on their, on their, uh, their back or their chest. I know there's an owl, a little bitty owl on your dollar bill. You probably, 90% of you can't even find it. Don't look now. Uh, but as soon as I get through, see if you can find that owl on that dollar bill. And ladies and gentlemen... Uh, you are, the love of money is the root of all evil. We'll talk more about that maybe at another time. T-shirts, uh, stickers, everything. Up there, they're, they're, they're connected with alien abductions and, and demonic spirits. Now listen to me. All these movies that Hollywood makes, listen to me carefully. All these movies that Hollywood makes are based on stuff that's true and Hollywood carries them to the extreme so that you will think it's fiction. Just like zombies. Just like people come back from the dead. Just like you make all these monsters. That's, you know why? That's so empty. That's silly. That's just Hollywood. That's what the devil wants you to think. So it's like the thing at Roswell, New Mexico back in the 40s when that, all that UFO stuff, it's a known fact. Anybody who's done their homework knows something crashed in Roswell, New Mexico. There was recovered bodies. There was all kind of weird stuff. They, they were not coming from outer space. There ain't nobody that lives out in outer space unless God lets the demons fly around out there sometime. There is no people on other planets. They are not coming from outer space. They're coming from down there. And the Bible teaches that all the way through. The earth opens up in the book of Revelation and creatures come out of this earth. And up there in Nome, Alaska, they made a movie of it called The Fourth Kind. I saw part of it. I don't recommend you watch it. It's some stupid Hollywood movie. But there was a, there was a, a psychologist, psychiatrist named Abigail Tyler and done study after her husband died and she interviewed all these people in Nome, Alaska, a little old town. There was like tons of people disappearing, disappearing for no known reason. And it is a, it is a fact that there's people disappeared in Nome, Alaska. The unbelievers say, oh, they're just, somebody went fishing, they drowned. It's awful cold up here. But they have an unusual amount of people disappearing. You can look it up when you get time. They made a movie out of it with with the supposedly documented. I do not say I endorse that movie. I don't say that the movie is even right. I am saying it's based on truth, and the movie carried it way over here, so you'd think it was all a joke, but it's not. Case after case after case. Those people said I'd be in the band, and I'd wake up at 3.33. The clock would say 3.33. And there was a large white owl at my window. 
And then somebody else would come in and say the very same thing that didn't even know that person. It's documented. So Al represents, if the Holy Spirit, you say, that can't be. If the Holy Spirit can represent everybody I dove, an Al can represent an evil spirit. You know what the Indians believed for years? The Indians believed for years that owls were the keeper of the spirit world gate and that they contained souls of the dead. Whitley Strieber, in his famous communion movie and book many years ago, mentioned the influence of owls in his, in his alien abduction and things like that. All right. The most rich and popular politicians in America go to a place in California every year called Bohemian Grove. How many of you ever heard of the Bohemian Grove? Well, you need to do your homework. You watch too many stupid shows. Bohemian Grove's out in California, documented fact, the, the, the bunch of men meet there acting weird every year, and they have a ritual. Somebody broke in there and filmed it. You can see it. It's on YouTube. And they have a ritual in front of a 40 foot owl and dance around that thing and want the gods of, of prosperity and wealth. Soup, I, you'd be shocked if I named you the politicians that go there every year. Standing naked against the oak tree. Weird stuff like that. I mean, it's all, it's documented. It's not, I'm not joking. It's satanic. And something you can see represents something you can't see. Listen, this country this morning is so run over with evil spirits and demonic activity, it's scary, people. It's scary. You say, I don't believe, I believe that's silly. That's exactly what the devil wants you to think. Exactly. You see those owls on the Illuminati, the occult symbols, the Masonic Lodge stuff, all the way through. He's a satanic bird. Number seven, lastly. This will help you to be able to leave in good spirits. The eagle, he's a soaring bird. Thank God the eagle's a soaring bird. The eagle is a picture of a person who gets right with God and prays. In Isaiah chapter 40, it said, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God said he'll, he'll get you strong. In, in other words, the eagle is the strongest bird there is. The eagle can fly higher than any other bird. Thank God that's a picture of a Christian who will get right with God and serve the Lord. And let me tell you some things about evil. eagles. They are swift. They they uh, they. They, they take their kids. I remember hearing the eagle preacher years ago. He said, hey, have y'all ever seen them a real eagle nest over at Dollywood? Lord, them, their nest is big as from here to that wall. That's a bird nest, brother. Big old round thing. You, some of y'all, I mean, you can you, you put your whole family in there and sleep. Them little baby eagles ain't little. And uh, they, they have them way up on top of a cliff somewhere out in, out in west Montana or somewhere. And they said, them mother eagles will raise those mother, baby eagles and she'll go get food and bring it to them and get food and bring it to them and one day it's time for the little eagles to learn how to fly and you know what that mother eagle do she'll look and say now listen I ain't feeding y'all your whole life it's about time y'all learn how to fly and make it on your own you ain't gonna sit around here and lay on the couch and play video games all day and expect me to feed you y'all listening to me ain't you it's funny they got more sense than a lot of people got you got a college, you got a four-year degree, and you're still living in my basement. Get out! And she'll take them baby eagles and throw them out of that nest, five thousand feet up, and they just go straight down, like that, turning flips. And that eagle said, hey, "Mama, Mama, I can't believe you did that." And you know what they said that thing will do? They said that mother eagle will let that thing fall a couple of thousand feet. 
Glory to God, make me want to shout. And all of a sudden, she's got her eye on it. She ain't worried a bit. And all of a sudden, she'll swoop down through there like a big jet, buddy, and scoop that baby eagle up right before it hits the ground and take it back up there till it can fly on its own. Glory to God. Hell, that's exactly the way the Lord does us. Sometimes he'll, kick, he'll, he'll make us want to do it on our own. But if we can't, he'll be there to pick you up, brother, if you can't make him. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That's what an eagle will do. She's a soaring bird. You know what else an eagle will do? They said, if an eagle, if a prey gets after an eagle, a ravenous, ravenous bird or something, going to chase it. You know what? When it's, when, it, when it's carrying its young or something, eagles have two sets of eyes. And, and they, they got these little lenses. They can go like sunglasses, something, and go down over their eyes. It's weird, man. Of course, that all evolved. You know, that all evolved, if you believe school teachers. Uh, by accident, pure accident. And anyway, those eagles got them two sets of eyes. Whenever she needs it, you know what she can do? They said when something gets after them, a prey gets after them, that eagle will turn and look at the sun. And brothers, you'll turn them like that and fly right straight into the sun. Just a dead, and them that follow her can't stand the light, and they abandon chase. Oh, my Lord, listen to me this morning. Lord, for an old country boy like me that needs help from God, listen, sometimes the devil gets after me. Sometimes the world tries to make a bit. I know where to go, buddy. I know where to go. I head right straight for the sun, the S-O-N, and my enemies can't follow me there. There's a hiding place. Thank God there's somewhere we can go where the devil can't get us, y'all. Woo, hallelujah. You can go to the rock that is higher than I. That's what an eagle does. Guess what else eagles do? Eagles are completely monogamous. When they get married, they stay together until one of them dies. <clears throat> How dumb humans are. Poor old mama, eagle, he'll stay right there with her. Now when she dies, he might go find her. I don't know. But they stay, they stay together. They don't say, I don't like you no more. I like him at work because he's hot. <laughs> yeah, that's what he used to think about you. So he got to know you. That's why he can't stay in a relationship. Starts up, bow like that, and then it just dies down from there on. An eagle is monogamous. But he mounts up with wings. Let me tell you one more thing. I'm done. You know what an eagle does? Have you ever seen pictures? Or you might have seen. You might have had the privilege of seeing. Really, I seen them when I was preaching in Montana. My goodness, preacher, we'd be going down the road, and I'd say, "Lord, what's that?" There'd be fifteen hundred elk just running down through the pasture, that tall, about twice as big as our deer. Thousands of them just out there. I said, "Who owns them?" Nobody. Go out there and shoot you some if you want to. There's, there's all kinds of animals everywhere. They go hunting at night for mountain lion, just for the fun of it, just to shoot stuff. And, and I, he said, look over at that eagle. And there was a, a fence post, and there was an eagle. Honest to goodness, that eagle from the ground was that tall. Their wingspan's eight feet. I'm here to Jimmy right there. That's some wings there, brother. And they, that eagle was that tall sitting on that fence post. And you know what they do? You've seen pictures, you've seen on TV, way, way, way up there, and they're just doing like this. They ain't even flapping their wings. They can fly for almost forever without ever even flapping. They say that eagles' wings are so big and heavy that if they had to flap their wings all that way, they couldn't do it. But you know what they've learned how to do? They've learned to get underneath that current. And sometimes they'll sit and not even move until the wind starts blowing. And they'll say, there's the wind, and they'll catch that wind. And they know how to do this way and that way and turn, turn around, go the other way. And, they, and they, fly, they, say, they say they let the current keep them up. They let the wind guide them. They let the wind hold them. They don't do it in their own strength. Are y'all listening to me? They don't do it in their own strength. They ride on the wind. Somebody tell me what the wind is the type of in the Bible. 
Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, a Christian, a strong Christian, we can't, I can't do this on my own. I'm not strong enough, buddy. I love it when I get up there and just ride the current, buddy. I tell you, people, sometimes people say, Brother Danny, how in the world do you do all that? You, I, I, get, I go somewhere and wait on the Lord and wait till the wind blows, and then I just ride the current. Yesterday, we had a bus right down here yesterday morning. I had rushed out here. There's people standing here waiting on me to do a funeral, a wedding. Same spirit. And I came in, and I done this wedding. <laughs> Some friends of mine stood right here and done that wedding. And I was, and they said, can we take it eat? I said, I've got to go. I said, I've got to go. They said, why do you have to run? I said, i got a funeral. This man over here, raise your hand over our brother Wayne. His, his mom passed away, and I went to do, I said, i got to go in Hickory in about 45 minutes and do, a, do a, his mother's funeral. And I got a, well, I, st- I stopped to the store and went in there and grabbed the first sandwich I seen. And they said turkey and cheese. I said, that's enough. And I pulled up and ate it going down the road. That was my dinner and drunk water. And I mean, and all, you say, how do you do that? I just, I just hold my wings out. And he carries me. Now, you'll never, ever be a good Christian just doing this, just trying to fly, I can't get nothing done. I try to witness, it don't work. I try to, right, listen, brother, learn how to get with God and wait on the Lord until the Spirit of God works in you and you can, you can get above your problems and ride that current and you'll be a lot better off. Amen? Amen. That's Bible birds. Each one of them could be a whole sermon. You saw yourself in one of these this morning. When that book speaks, it's infallible on every subject. You heard stuff and learned stuff this morning that you won't get in any college or university in America because they leave out God and everything that's spiritual and think everything's natural. And it ain't. Let's mount up with wings as eagles and stand with our heads bowed. I don't know what you might be going through this morning. I don't know what your trouble is. I don't know what your burdens are. Maybe marriage trouble. Maybe physical. I don't know. But I'm going to invite you while she plays softly. We're not even going to sing. She's playing softly. Let's get in this altar this morning and let's give it all to him. Lord.